1836, the American economy was uh, undergoing a boom. It was growing massive amounts of cotton, which it was exporting to British factories. And it was undergoing an expansion that was heavily dependent on investment from the United Kingdom. In 1837, though, the, the boom collapsed. Uh, overseas trade began to dry up. Uh, the inflow of investment from the UK uh, began to diminish. And by early 1840, the country was sliding into a deep depression. By 1842, the country was in an economic crisis, but it was also in a political and social crisis as well. Many American states had borrowed heavily from Europe to pay for new canals and railroads and highways. And when the economy went bad, states were unable to repay their loans. Federal revenues collapsed because of the Depression, and there were fights between the major regions of the country, the North, the South, and the West, on questions of spending and taxation that became increasingly vitriolic. In this book, I tell a story about how the crisis develops and also how the country pulls itself together. Americans had to find a new balance between liberty and order. State governments, built on the idea of popular sovereignty, ended up adopting new constitutional restrictions on taxing and spending. Uh, city governments created new police forces to deal with the problem of disorder in the streets. And in Washington, politicians had to find a way of maintaining the peace between regions of the country and also between the United States and the United Kingdom. This is a neglected period of American history, but an important one because it's left us with a substantial political and institutional legacy. And it's also a story that has a lot of parallels with our economic and political predicament today.